What's up, guys? Here we are live, Monster Motivator TV number 41. And when I tell you our guest today has a lot of balls in the air, that is an understatement. This woman, <laughs> I don't even know how you can do it, honestly. Let me give you the laundry list of things. Um, uh, her name's Julie. I'm going to have her introduce herself, give her a little, give us a little background, where, where you started, where you're at today, and where you see yourself going. But uh, let me give you a little bit of rundown and a laundry list of, of things that she's accomplished and the things that she's doing. First of all, she's a mother of three, right? Mm -hmm. um, she's an Army vet. So thank you. Army. Thank you. How long were you in the Army? Um, just three years. Okay. Army vet. Um, she has a nonprofit that's also tied in with a farm that she runs. Is that correct? That's right. And because she still needs more to do... She's part-time at Elias Shoes, and we've done two episodes with uh, Elias Shoes here in Marietta. Um, did, I, did I cover most of that, or am I missing? Pretty what? good. All right, good. So you must, have, you must have like 48 hours in a day versus 24. How did you do that? I have been told that in the past. <laughs> so, so introduce yourself, okay. and, and just give us a little rundown, you know, where you grew up and, uh, you know, where you're at now, and, and a little bit of, uh, well, let's start off with where you grew up. Okay. Um, I'm from here originally. I grew up in Oceanside. My okay. parents still live in Oceanside. So you're um, a SoCal girl from I the am. beginning? Yeah. Okay. Uh, born in Louisiana, actually, and then moved out here when I was a kid. Okay. Um, so still love it over there. Do you do you remember Louisiana at all? Oh, yes. Yeah. A lot, because most of my family still lives over there. Okay. A little, little warm. Try to visit. Yeah, it's it's little... so big. It's so pretty. It's so big. <laughs> Is it really? Oh, I've never been. It's, it's my favorite spot. Really? Yes. A SoCal girl saying that, huh? Oh, yeah. Wow, that's interesting. We'll, we'll talk about that. So, uh, what was your uh, what was your childhood like? Oh, I had an awesome childhood. Okay. My parents are awesome. I have great siblings. I mean, it couldn't be better. I just had a great upbringing. Okay. It really was foundational for how I lived my life was, okay. was my parents. Because so, they're just really go-getters. So, they just gave you great support. Mm -hmm. And then they gave you this crazy work ethic that you had. Absolutely. Right? They do. Wow. Wow. So, um, so you grew up in Oceanside, mm -hmm. and how many uh, brothers and sisters do you have? I have a brother and two sisters. Okay. Give us a little bit, because I like to start there, because it's always our foundation, whether it's good or bad, right? That's our, our foundation and our conditioning, our stories. So what made it so great? What made it so reinforcing? Well, my parents are just exceptionally hard workers. Okay. Uh, even to this day, even though my father is retired, mm -hmm. um, they never sit still. They're never, um, they're always off. Now they vacation all the time because okay. that's what they do. They earned it. Yes, right. absolutely. My dad, he was a pilot, mm -hmm. um, but he okay. he still teaches karate. He surfs every day. He's really active. Yeah, he's doing awesome. his 60s. He's that's, just amazing. That's awesome. And then my mother is a stay-at-home mom, but awesome at what she did. She mm -hmm. was our PTA president. Always, in, <laughs> I mean, she was involved. If there was an involved mom, it was my mom. So they really just showed me that you never do anything halfway. If you're going to do it, you do it right, and you, and you do it to the fullest extent that you and, possibly can. And really, it sounds like it's that traditional foundation that, that this country really was built on, mm -hmm. right? It's the stay-at-home mom, right. the, the dad, you know, obviously the father went out and worked, uh, uh, supported the family, but without that, without that backbone of the wife that, that really runs everything, right, yep. behind the scenes, mm -hmm. uh, it wouldn't work, right? It just or it wouldn't work to that to that level. Absolutely. Well, he was gone a lot. Being a pilot, he flew international. Commercial, commercial, commercial pilot. pilot. Okay. So he was, you know, not there very much. So it really was on her to run the house. She ran the whole show. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm sorry, how many brothers and sisters? I have two sisters and a brother. Okay. Are you? Where do you fit in this? I'm second, so I have an older sister, and then my other two are younger. Because you're middle. Mm -hmm. Middle. All really successful. I have a teacher. Wow. Uh, my sister who is a teacher. My brother, who's pursuing a music career, and my younger sister is a historian. And you know, it's no, um, it's no coincidence. It's no shock, because of the foundation that they built for you. You know, again, that becomes your your story. That becomes your self image. That becomes who you believe you are, mm -hmm. right? So um, I'm sure you're uh, implementing that with your kids because you know how how important it is. Absolutely. Would you say yeah? Absolutely. Okay. So. Now, uh, how, what kind of student were you? Did you like school? Did you not like school? I was an okay student. Okay. Um, you know, I went Average. to private school my whole life. Oh, you did? Um, yes, which was a fantastic. It was really great education. It really, again, 
You have to work hard. You have yeah. to do well. There's no like, oh, I failed. You, that's not an option. Okay. So um, I, I really enjoyed school when I went. <laughs> right there. I'm right there with you, girl. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. When I decided to, to show up, exactly. which as I got older, it got much, much less. Exactly. Um, I know. I know. But you know, that was okay. I, I did great. I learned what I needed to know. Okay. Um, struggled a little bit when I first got out of high school, got married and divorced very quickly, had a child. And then I went into the military right after that, kind of looking for oh. for my place in the world and so, how I was going to do. So, what do you think? Where do you think that struggle started? Where do you think that that little bit? Oh, you know, we, which all, we all sometimes have. we choose the wrong people to marry when we're eighteen. No, oh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. At eighteen, that's right. That's right. right. You you get a pass. That's Listen, right. at eighteen, you get a pass. Uh, but you had your first. Uh, I had my four? first child, girl. I had three girls. Oh, all three girls. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, you, what made you? Um, what made you go into the army? You know, I was really looking for a way to support my child. Okay. Um, looking for a way to kind of break away from what I had been doing, mm -hmm. and it was really a great space to go out, learn discipline, um, mm -hmm. have a fantastic Structure. job, travel, just everything I really needed mm -hmm. in my life at that time. Okay. Which it really did for me. Okay. And I, I'll always just be super thankful to the military uh, for what they did. And I would imagine that you're uh, going back a little bit. We'll go in reverse a little bit. Growing up, I, I, it sounds like your parents made you work. You made you realize that you know there's no free lunch, if you will, exactly. right? Whether it's chores at the house, mm -hmm. getting a job, whatever that is, is that would that be uh, absolutely okay? There's definitely nothing, nothing handed to you. I okay. mean, support an awesome foundation, but you got to earn it. You have to earn it. You got to earn it. That's what life tells us. Right. And I, that's probably that's probably why you're able to get out of that funk right mm -hmm. so quick because you have that strong foundation. And again, I'm uh, I'm not a, a a, a counselor, or I'm not. A, I'm not a. I'm not going to tell people how to how to raise their kids. But at the end of the day, it's it's not. It's simple, but just not always easy. When you can build that foundation for the little ones, mm -hmm. because they're open like a sponge, you give them such a benefit, such an advantage, mm -hmm. right? That's Versus right. doing everything for them, or yes. or the other side, right? Letting them do whatever they want, and there's no recourse because because yeah. life. <laughs> Okay. If there's consequences, life is going to say we don't care, right? <laughs> right? Exactly. We're not your mom. Yep. Um, so, how was the army? Was it was it what you thought it was, or what you what you think? Well, I don't think I was cut out to be the best soldier that I could be because I don't <laughs> right. like people telling me what to do. I like to tell people you, what to do. You are the entrepreneur, <laughs> right? So, that, so that was a little bit um, interesting dynamic for me. But again, you learn to be humble and you learn to do what you have to do to get by. And it, lesson after lesson after lesson taught me, um, which was great because again, it's exactly what I needed when I needed it. So, and you know, you, a lot of people think that I guess my appearance, they, they or they ask me anyway if I've been in the military and I haven't. And to be honest with you, my answer is really that's the end. I was such an entrepreneur from day one, and that's why school was so hard for me right. because I, I can't. It's so hard for me to stay in that track. Oh, this is what you need to do. This is, you know, can, so I, I feel for you. I mean, that had to be, that had to be a major. It was an adaption. adjustment. It, it was, it, it was very it, difficult, but you know, again, it was, it was perfect. So let me ask you this, Julia going into the army mm -hmm. and Julia leaving the army. Where, what's the difference? What's the opposite? What's, who are you then? Right. And who are you right after? So Julia going into the army was completely lost. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know how I was going to get there. Um, I had very little discipline mm -hmm. and just kind of wandering about, not really yeah. knowing. What An eighteen-year-old kid just right. trying to be, figure trying out to how to be a mom, out. right? Yeah, to mom. How to support, mm -hmm. right? And how to live the right way. You know, obviously, we all want to live. You know, right. we do our best. Mm -hmm. So, okay, going in. So then you're in the army and. Um, you know that you have some major things to, to, to adjust to, right? Yes. Because so many people that go in want that structure and then they adapt to that structure so well because it's a it's just it's everything's laid out. Right. right? And, and it, it really fits their personality style, which is great. It just it makes the world go around, right? It just right. So what are some of the things you had to find yourself doing to to be humble, to to be coachable if you will? Right. Well, number one, shut my mouth. <laughs> I learned that very fast. Right. Okay. They, um, they, uh, they told you that quick? They did. Okay. They, for some reason, didn't want to hear my opinion. <laughs> Even though you were right. Right. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Right. 
<laughs> so that was probably the big lesson. A okay. And again, just making sure that it's not the way I want things done, it's the way they want things done. Right. And it doesn't matter, again, <laughs> so what funny. I think. That is so <laughs> real. It's so real, though, isn't it? Right. Yeah. It, that's exactly what it was. So that was the biggest lesson. Okay. Learning to conform mm -hmm. to somebody else's I idea of mm -hmm. how I should do things. Okay. Um, so with that. Yeah. Okay. Which uh, was good. Coming out of the military, I realized very quickly what I needed to do to make my life successful. So oh. I knew, okay, this is not for me. Okay. So what is going to be for me? Okay. What, what's going to um, make me happy in my career? And I was really looking for a career, not just a job. Okay. Um, I happened into the banking industry and uh, got uh, up to the corporate level into management oh, oh, oh. very quickly. So within um, eight years, I was managing a, a, a group of 50 people, wow. and I really thrived. I really loved it. I loved let's, my job. Well, let's talk about that, right? Because it ties in with what I talk about leadership, right? Mm -hmm. Because you, you can't have 50 people under you be successful without learning how to be a real effective leader. Yes. Will that go, does that go back? How far back do you think that started with your, with your upbringing or the, the Army? I think it all starts back from the army, and I okay. do believe that certain okay. people have that personality, yes. and certain people don't. There's there, there's a place for everybody, but we are all and there's leaders, levels. There be and there's and I there's levels, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I find myself. I'm a very ambitious person, mm -hmm. so you know I was always looking. What's my next step? And what do I have to do next to move up the ladder? Okay. And I think when you have your eye on something like that, then, right. then you can make it happen. Oh, yes. Versus just kind of. Oh, I hope I get a raise. I hope I get a promotion. You have to like get a traje trajectory for yourself. Yes, you have. You need a direction, right. right? So that's a great point that I want to hit home. Is is and and it's in your DNA, right? If it's who you are, but for somebody that it's not, um, I think that's a big struggle because the uh, kind of I, I always call it like a buoy in the ocean, right? Some people wake up and let the day control them. Versus you controlling your day, mm -hmm. right? And making, and like you said, making it happen. Not sitting back and wishing it would, hoping it would, you know. So that's probably why you moved up in that leadership role so quickly, right? So, but it doesn't mean if you don't, if, if you don't have that, you can still acquire it if you're willing to learn, be humble, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And do the, and do the best you can. I mean, it, it sounds, you know, it, it sounds like what you hear all the time, but that's really the truth. Yeah. That's, that's it to me, it's how hard am I willing to work? Mm -hmm. how, if I'm willing to work harder than the next guy, I'm going to move up. And I'm just always the hardest worker. Mm -hmm. So that to me is what and, I do. And how important is it to not only work hard, and let me ask you this, but also to adapt. In other words, as an entrepreneur, we're, we really should be called firemen, fire, mm -hmm. firefighters, because we're putting out fires every day, mm -hmm. right? You don't know what's going to happen nope. that next day. Tomorrow, I have no idea really <laughs> what's going to be thrown at me, but that's my oxygen. Yes. That's, that's why that's, I love. Yes. That's why yes. I love. Yes. You know, my thing is always say yes. I don't care if I can do it. I don't care if I think I can do it. I might not be able to do it, but I'm going to say yes to that opportunity every single time. Jump off that cliff and build a plane on the way down. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Because there's really, honestly, at the end of the day, you can have the best business plan. You can have everything on paper, but it's going to change. You're going to tweak it. And if you can't adapt, you're going to be gone. Yep. You're just, you're just going to be gone. So what are some of the skills that you learned? So you took a lot of skills from your Army uh, background, and you applied it into the banking Mm -hmm. Right, world. Um, okay, let's do this. This is fun. I like this. Who's the Julia? Mm -hmm. Eight okay. years, right? Coming into that, in, yep. into the bank mm -hmm. versus uh, eight years later. Okay. You know, running Absolutely. 50 people, you know. Right. And, yeah. Well, I think coming into the banking world, I was very timid. I didn't really know very much about it. So I was just trying Brand to learn, new learn, world. learn, 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 learn. That was it. I okay. took stacks of books home. And how much can I study? How much can I learn? So I just immersed myself in what I needed to know. So you took, you, let's talk about this, right? Because again, a lot of people find themselves outside their comfort zone and they're in a brand new world, mm -hmm. which you were. So, so many people are going, well, how, how did she do it? It's simple, right? Not always easy. You took the initiative, you took the action, right? right. And then you put the perspiration, the, the action, that blood, sweat, and tears into just, I need to. I need to own this. I need to dominate this mm -hmm. this sector. Right. Is that okay? That's exactly what I wanted to do. So I wanted to become the expert right. in my office because 
obviously I wanted to make myself indispensable in that office, which it's is the value. Exactly. Yes. So that's really where I started. I wanted to make myself the best and I made myself the best and okay. then I moved up from there and then I made myself the best in that position and then I moved up. And, and that's kind of just was my trajectory okay. of where I was going to go and how I was going to get there. Okay, one of the things I want to touch on, which I love, right? And you, I can tell by how you're explaining it and your energy is you, one of the key things is that made her successful is she knew that she had to take that next step. You don't have to necessarily see the whole staircase, but take that next step. Mm -hmm. And also what I like about this, right? And I can feel the energy is you understand that you have to earn it first. Like in other words, you don't go in saying, okay, I dominated this and now I need to go up. If I don't get up six steps, right? Then, then they're not, they're not uh, uh, treating me right. right. You knew you had to earn it, right? Yep. And you were willing to earn it. That's the key. Are you willing? right to Absolutely. earn it are you willing to be in those trenches mm -hmm. and the things that you learn in those trenches are nothing nothing you get in the classroom nope right and you're, you have to do it you have right. to do it and you have to do it again and again and again until you're so good at it they can't help but promote you and be willing to fall down yep. own it oh yeah and, and move forward so all that studying you did started to prepare you but still nothing like when you're in the actual real world the Absolutely. real trenches mm -hmm. right now how long um, how was it when you got to a point where you have 50 people under you? Because um, you, you, you became a different person or else you wouldn't have been able to do it, right? From, from day one. Sure. From, from day one. Well, the transition from being a worker uh -huh. to a manager right. was, is, is a difficult one. Yeah. And one that, again, I studied for. I read every managerial book that I could get my hands on. I got a mentor. You know, I, oh, I awesome. worked with people who knew what they were doing and I had their ears so I could ask questions. How do I do this? What's your thoughts? And that really helped me. Okay. Um, one of the best things that I ever learned from my mentor was that when you're a manager, you surround yourself with people who are far better than you at certain things. Amen. Amen. And there's no competition. It's not about that. It's about you're good at this. I'm not great. We're a fantastic team. And not only not competition, right? Amen. It's also with your level of awareness in yourself. So now when you identify your weaknesses, you can enhance them. Right. And then run with your strengths. Mm -hmm. So, and again, it's the same, same exact recipe, just different ingredients, right? So then you start to, to acquire those tools and, fig and know that, listen, I can't do it all. I don't, I'm not supposed to do it all. Right. Let me surround myself with the right people. And then we just, we keep moving forward. So when you became, as you start to move up, did it, did it start with five people, 10 people, then 50? It, um, it, yes and no. Okay. I kind of took over an office that was okay. currently running. So uh, that was automatic and then we kind of built it from there. So, so there was a void, you filled that void and then you just started building from there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, and you were there eight years? I was uh, probably there for about four years, yeah. In that position? Building that office. But, but all together with the banking industry? Oh, the banking industry, about eight years. Eight years, okay. Mm -hmm. And then you got out, then what? Then my daughter was born, my third daughter, third, Lillian. Okay. Okay. who has a disability okay. and I could no longer work. Oh. Um, so I had to completely reinvent my life wow. because that was my identity. My work was my identity. Yes, yes. And um, wow. I loved being a mom, but I was a... Right, I know, I know, <laughs> I get you. Right, I know. Uh, that, that was who I was, was my, was my work. Now, how did you, how did you handle that? That's, that is, that's, that is really uh, It was life-changing. Oh, by, uh, it had to be, it had to be. Cause I can, I understand, I connect with you on the identity thing, mm -hmm. right? This is, I'd rather be doing what I'm doing now than being on vacation. Right, Honestly, exactly. I just, I really would. Yeah, I would work from vacation because yeah. I wanted to, not yes. because I was forced yes. to. Yes, yeah. because you, you, you just, it. there's a pride, mm -hmm. it becomes you, yep. right? And people have their thoughts on it, good or bad, it doesn't matter, it's what works for you. So now, how do you, how do you address that? How do you figure out how to make a win out of this instead of a loss? Because that is huge. It was difficult. Um, oh. You know, when I got her diagnosed, when she was born, she obviously wasn't diagnosed with a disability. She's diagnosed with autism. Okay. Um, right. But she was a very difficult child, even as an infant. She couldn't ride in cars. She couldn't be held. She couldn't, uh, I mean, I was because basically- Because of the disability? Right. But there was, I didn't know that. 
Um, so I just thought, oh, there's just, it's, she's just a difficult baby. I, I'm right. not really sure. My kids are so spread out. Mm -hmm. I have 22, 15, and yeah. 6. Yeah. So, you know, you don't remember everything about being having... And it's an different. It's a, it's and it's a different human being. Yeah. So, about one and a half, I really figured out, okay, there's something really wrong here, and I need to, I need to figure out what it is. And that's when I got her diagnosed with autism. And, and then we started the whole journey of all the therapies and all the doctor's appointments and everything that needs to happen with that. Wow. So then you had to completely back out of the corporate world. 100%. So I, wow. I, I wasn't working at all. I, all of my focus was on her okay. and making sure that she had what she needed. Were you, now, were you married at the time? How were you being I able was to married at the time. Okay. Okay. Um, when she, for the, so for the first, my husband at the time deployed 10 days after she was born. Oh, he was so in the So the first year of her life, which was very difficult, he was gone, so it was just me. Okay. Um, it was, it was very interesting. But you were able to live off of. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. That was fine. Because I know people are probably wondering. Oh, yes. 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 Okay. Um, so you were by yourself. By myself. On that island. On the island. Right. Uh, but that's okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, you, you learn. Yes. And uh, so when I really looked around when I got her diagnosis, the first thing I needed was some answers from other parents who had been there. Okay. So that's what I went out and searched out. Okay, how do I how do I connect with people? Where's my Groups, support? Groups, yes. meetups, whatever that exactly. is. Exactly. And there was nothing. There really? was nothing in the Temecula Valley uh, for to support parents with special needs children. Wow. So I said... I will start something. There was nothing. There was nothing. That is, isn't that amazing? There were was, you blown away? Uh, I was blown away. There, there were some a few groups like they have a Down syndrome uh, oh, okay. group and the very specific things, but nothing that really would answer parents' questions. What I needed is that parent that overall, support for me. Okay. I didn't need my child to go play baseball or do this or do that. I needed answers. What were you looking for? I'm curious now. What were you looking for? Oh, I, I mean, I had a million questions. Okay. I was looking for a mentor. I was looking for somebody to tell me what to do next. Okay. okay. And so I went on Facebook and I created a group and I said, does anybody have a special needs child that wants to join my group? <laughs> that was pretty much she's what like, I said. She's like, we're, I, right, we're exactly, right over here. Over here. And I was hoping for 10 people. That was my, my prayer. Right. 10 people in this valley. Today we have 1,700 families. Wow. And how long? It's been three years. Wow. See, you're such an action taker, and that's what I, I resonate with. I mean, you just let's figure it out. Let's figure let's it out. Let's figure it out. You had no idea how to start a group. No. You had no idea. Now, did you find a mentor? In, in well, I have that? plenty of mentors now. <laughs> so, um, be careful what you wish for. I am rolling in the mentors, which okay. is, the, I, it couldn't be better, because now within our group, we have people who have been doing this for 30 years. Their children are in their 30s. All the way okay. down the line to people who are just getting their diagnosis today okay so no matter what i need or anybody in that group needs there's somebody who's already done it okay um i want to see if i can pull this up on my other facebook because i see some people jumping on and if there's questions sure we're just i'm just not able to uh, read it from back there um let me see real quick if we can <laughs> it's funny she's uh, jo we had a, a location change that's why we got on a little late and uh, Julia said oh my god it's live I didn't know it's live <laughs> so uh, we, we are able to bring it up I just want to see I just want to see if we can address the questions oh here we go Terry Williamson that's a there's a lady that you really should connect with over in Arizona just going through her own struggles as we all three girls mm -hmm. and just making it happen great great girl she says woohoo stay stay home moms <laughs> um, and we got some Evan says Evan Williams says uh, this is uh, truthful very good uh, Lori that's my girl she's she's a great great girl um, she called me out for the 22 day challenge the uh, oh, yes. yeah so she's keeping me honest she's keeping good me job, honest Lori. a lot of hearts so um so now you have this group. Yep. You started from zero. Mm -hmm. Never had any idea how to start a group. Never. Right? And didn't know anything about. I could barely even tell you what autism was when I started this group. I mean, I really had. Yeah, because no you, you've never had. It's never been part of your world. Never. So 
when you're in this now, you're starting this group, you're searching for people, how are you still, because it's so new, right? How are you able to um, still be okay with and figure out how you become okay with leaving your identity, if you will, and maybe creating a new one? Right. I don't know. This became my new identity. I am yeah. now an advocate for my child. Okay. That is who I am. But where was, how, like in this? Yes. I would say it took me about a week. I <laughs> love it. Oh my God. Really? It's true. It's true. I love myself. I tell myself, okay, I can cry for three days. I let myself breathe. And now if you move it. it on, you I cannot stay there. You've got right. to do something about it. Right. Because I'm want... not the grieving type. I'm right. not that person. So yes. Um, and then once I fully accepted that my child is made exactly how she's supposed to be made. She's oh, not alone. So accepting it. She's awesome. Right? Then it was go for it. Make her life the best possible. You know, that's that's so... It, I always say victims never win. Nope, absolutely. Right? And if you're going to be a victim, you're going to pay the price. Yep. Right? But you always have an opportunity to become the victor if you decide to. So you gave your... She gave herself time. Three days. Three days. That was it. I was not, I swear, I, when I said how long, I thought you were going to tell me a year or two, oh, you were just, you said a week, I'm like, that is monster mode right there, <laughs> That's, that is badass, so um, now you're coming to grips with it, you're becoming a different identity, yep. right, you know, the, and you know, I'm a big guy on your why, so mm -hmm. obviously your why is much bigger than you, yep. so you are going to be unstoppable, yep. so now how, when this group starts growing, what are some of the, uh, what are some of the things that are helping you? And, and changing. Yes. Well, again, uh, learning. Um, I had to learn something totally different. Throw educate out everything yourself. I know, okay. educate myself on something totally different. Again, it, it's the same formula. Surround yourself with people who know more than you and learn okay. and become better. And uh, again, if somebody said no, and there are a million people in the special needs world that are going to tell you no, it is. Um, it, I do not accept the word no, and I flat out tell people that. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't accept what you're saying, and this is how you're going to change Because it just it. doesn't make sense to you. There is a way. There is, there is always a, a way. way. Right? Especially mm -hmm. when your why is big enough. Exactly. It pulls you through mm -hmm. every time. So um, now you're building this this uh, group. You're starting to, you, you know, you wanted a mentor. Now you have multiple mentors, yep. right? Um, and the, are you able, what are some of the things you're able to do to help your your daughter now? Like, what are, I mean, you have to have a lot of tools, right, that you're yes. acquiring? Well, number one tool in my world is knowledge. Okay. Um, when okay. she has to have certain things at school, and I have to know all the laws. Uh, when they say no, I say, well, yes, this is why, and I'll bring out the code. <laughs> oh, wow. Same thing, when insurance companies tell me no, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, that's not what your policy says. Wow. Or when whatever agency wants yeah. to tell me no, I will find the code to tell them yes. <laughs> yes, so that whatever is, it is. Wow. And but then I get to share that information with the families that um, oh. we support in Go Bananas. Yeah. So it's not, and then it's not just me. And I can go on and ask a question. I'm struggling with this. I'll have thirty people answer. Well, this is what I do. This is what I do. This is what I do. It's a, it's an instant community. Where you get instant answers. The ultimate mastermind group. Yep. Right. The ultimate mastermind. It is. So let's talk about the title. Go bananas. Go bananas. So so <laughs> let's talk about that. Where where did that come from, and what what does it mean? Right. Well, um, we're always as parents, some more than others, on the edge. Like we're yes. just on yes. the edge. Yes. Um, of literally losing our minds. And no question. Us. And even as entrepreneurs, right? Exactly. If you're not a little crazy, you're not going to make it. Exactly. And you never know what's around the bend, what's going to happen next. So we're always just kind of, it was just a kind of a fun way to make fun of ourselves a little bit. And, you know, people be like, oh, I'm going bananas today. Okay. Help me. All right. You I know? got you. So it, it takes the edge off. Mm -hmm. It makes it a little lighter. Now, Go Bananas, is that the nonprofit? Or yes. is that the, is that, so is that your Facebook group too? Or? Yes, the Facebook so group is everything's, called Go Bananas. Everything's Go Bananas. Mm -hmm. It's a nonprofit. Yes, it is. So you had to learn nonprofits, I, huh? I did. You, you, had, you had some learning I to do, I had some huh? learning to do. Okay. So when I first wanted to go after my 501c3, mm -hmm. I contacted an attorney and they told me it was going to be $2,500 which I did not have. Mm -hmm. So I got a book, 
and I did my own 501c3. I locked myself in my room for a weekend, read that book, created my packet of papers about this one, sent it away, and was approved on the first time. Wow, you know, I just wanna let you know that after this show, we're gonna, I'm actually gonna add to your name. It's gonna be Julia Excuse Crusher <laughs> Rogoff, because honestly, there's nothing, there's nothing they're throwing at you that you're not gonna, you're not gonna figure out the cake head on. I mean, just, as a challenge, have you always been like that? Pretty much. Yeah. I love challenge. Challenge is just like, and if I see an obstacle, I'm just like, all right, I'm okay. gonna go get that. And let's take it a step further. Not only are you seeing obstacles now, but she's seeing obstacles that tie right into her why. And look, if this, if they say no, and you can prove that it's yes, now it's like you have that white hat, right? You're, 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 you're supporting everyone at thought. It was just a no and walked away. Right. Right. So that's your oxygen. Yes. And it's easy to walk away. That's the yes. easy part. Yes. Not for me. No, but, but for a lot for of the people, masses. it's easy to say, Absolutely. oh, I can't do it. I just, I can't accept that. I okay. can't accept the fact that I can't do something because I think I can do anything and put my mind to it. Exactly. Exactly. And going back to school, because I can relate, it just didn't keep, it, we're so, um, on that edge, right? That we're searching. That after a while, right or wrong, school gets boring. Mm -hmm. It gets there's no there's not enough right. in it for us, and that's just how we're wired. But then the flip side, if school is for you and you love school, God bless you, right? Yes. Run with it. Right. Run with we whatever. Need doctors to go to school forever. Right? You know, right? I can't do it. All that. So, right. so so God bless them as long as you know the intentions there. So how long has the nonprofit been in? About three years. Okay, three years, and you're just you're we're now, just growing and growing. Okay, how can how can somebody help you? How what what are some of the things you need? Well, for the parent nonprofit, we do a lot of seminars for okay. our families on how to navigate those things that I was talking about: the different government agencies, okay. the um, educational system, okay. things like that. So, anytime anybody wants to sponsor our seminars, we're always would love that. Okay, um, that part of the nonprofit really kind of runs is running on really its own. well and okay. on its own and um because we have so many families contributing oh it doesn't um take you know like that day-to-day -day kind of thing. really it's, it's wow, that's really how, fantastic that's how you guys are working huh yes that's awesome so then our next thing we looked around and we kind of said okay what's next what are we going to do next uh, my partner and i her name is samantha morton she runs the nonprofit with me okay. and um she you know, we kind of were brainstorming, what are we gonna do? What's our most underserved population? I mean, special needs people are already the most underserved population, but within that sect of people, mm -hmm. adults are the epitome of underserved. Are they? Yes. Yeah. Once, when they're in school, um, up until high school, they're very well served by the school system. Yeah. And they have a lot of activities in the community, lots for them to do. As soon as they get out of high school, all of that stops. Wow. And it's very difficult. Many of them are home. They feel lost. Yes. Right? In Riverside County, there's a nice. Well, what's up, guys? We're back. We lost a little bit of a uh, little bit of juice. I think Julie was bringing so much heat that it it over. Uh, yeah. Um, so let's let's so so now you're at, you're in the nonprofit. You're three years in. Mm -hmm. um, where are you? Where do you see yourself going with this? With the nonprofit. Yeah. So ultimately, we would like to take, we, we developed our farm concept, okay. which is a vocational employment for adults with special needs, okay. to be very generalized. Okay? Okay. So the business plan is one that anyone can take anywhere and apply it to any type of business. It doesn't have to be a farm. It can be a restaurant. It can be a retail store. Okay. So the way that we have it set up where they come in and they learn and they have certain milestones that they hit and then they graduate from the program, that can be done anywhere in any location because they're very capable people. But unfortunately, the typical community just hasn't caught on to that yet. Right. And, and, and they, you know, they have to be in a certain, you know, there's certain things that might be a little different than right. somebody else, but you have to understand that just like so many different personalities, right? It's so, it's so different. We might learn differently or we might learn the same, you yep. know? Um, so talk about the farm. What, what, what do you guys do there? What, what are some of the things that you're seeing? Sure. Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to give really big credit to the city of Marietta. Okay. Because they stepped up and uh, they leased us that land okay. for a dollar a year. 
Wow. A, almost a four acre farm really? because they really, really believed in the program and what we were Such doing. a great town. Love it. Such a great town. Welcome me, you know, adopt me, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, they, they just bend over backwards for it's us. Isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. So, um, actually, Councilman Alan Wong was the person who approached me and said, We have this plot of land. Would you wow. like to do something wow. with it? And I said, Sure. Even though I have never grown anything <laughs> in my entire life, but yes. Right, I jump off that cliff, that. right? And okay. it just so happened I was in the networking group and I was explaining my vision and what I was doing. And somebody sitting right beside me and he was Michael. He's, I'm a farmer. I would love to get involved. And now he's our farm director. Wow. So to me, I mean, I am a believer. I'm a God person. Okay. He really puts the right people in the right well, You are a law of attraction. I mean, that, that's the law of attraction, right? And I, you know, again, whether um, you're talking religion or spiritual, however you want to talk, at the end of the day, you, as you keep moving forward in action, which you are such an action taker, it becomes magical. The people and the circumstances come in, right, to make it right. happen, mm -hmm. to make it happen. You just keep moving forward. So again, there's no secret to this. It's the same, same recipe. Yep. Um, so now, uh, but what do you, so, so you have the kids working in, on the farm? Absolutely. Okay. So we have partnered with the um, Murrieta School District, Twinkville School District, Lake Hills North School District. They okay. send the kids, they bus them to our farm. As well as adult day programs here. So they come from what? All over the all Inland over, Empire? All over Southwest Riverside. Okay. Yes. Okay. And they come to our farm. And they do everything. Okay. Uh, there's nothing on our farm that they don't do. They plant the crops. They manage the crops. They harvest the crops. They help deliver it. All of our produce that we grow is um, donated to either the food banks or the senior center. So last year we, grew, we donated 10,000 pounds of food. And that is all done. By the, um, so at this point, let me ask you this. Do you have some of the kids? What, what are the, what's the ages? Um, our target is 18 and above. Oh, okay. So, so I'm saying kids, uh, uh, adults. 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 Um, so are you at the point where some of your adults um, are actually um, uh, in leadership roles? Absolutely. And, and teaching mm -hmm. and learn that never knew this before? Never knew this before. That's, that is, that's huge. So we can easily say um, whatever their you know yeah. their name Joe and whatever. Joe yeah. and just say hey we need you to show this new group who's never been here how to get this row ready for planting. He would just take all his things he'll take and, he, and he'll get it done. Let me uh, this just came to me right. So you've been in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. You were in the army. You grew up in Oside, but you were in the army. You were in the corporate world. Um, what are what are some of the major pluses? that when someone has this, they bring as a, an employee or as a worker? What are, what are some of the things that you see versus the other, uh, the other world, if you will? Yes. Well, we deal with all different types of disability in all functioning levels. Oh, not just? Not just, all, every disability oh, comes to our farm. Oh. So uh, we have physical disability, mental oh, developmental okay. delay. Um, we are all about inclusion on our farm, so okay. nobody is turned away. Um, but on time, they're always on time. They are always show up ready to work. They're excited to be there because they don't have a lot of opportunities. Yeah. So when you give them one, that gratitude. they are ready to work and work hard to the best of their ability. They're, they're just amazing people. They're happy, they spread joy, they want to um, talk and have a great time while they're working. They're, they're interested in you and they're interested in what they're doing. It's just, it's just so pure. I will take, Ten of them uh, over. I mean, I will just yeah. take them over and over and over. I, it's I just love so them. pure, huh? And it has that combination of being hungry and grateful because that's that's pretty much unbeatable, yes. right? And that's what happens. We were just I just did a show where uh, you know uh, people that come from a different country, right? Mm -hmm. They have that hunger and they're so grateful to be here. So that's that that's what you have. You have yes. bus loads of gratitude exactly. and hunger. Exactly, it's exactly right, and they couldn't be happier. Most of the time, so they go to other job sites besides ours. Okay. Um, ours is the only one that's outside, and most of the time they do janitorial work, and they're oh. tired of cleaning. Right. And if you look at my farm, that's three and a half acres that they have completely taken care of for the past year. They're perfectly wow. capable of doing much more than cleaning. Right. They can be in the leadership role. Absolutely. I mean, that's the ultimate, right? That's the ultimate value. Yes. And you can be on that leadership role. How many volunteers do you have? 
Well, we don't have a lot of volunteers right now, unfortunately. Really? We need more volunteers. Uh, okay. We are, um, we're new, so we have been only doing this farm for about a year. Okay. And uh, getting the word out, it can be difficult when you're so busy doing the day work. Day to day. Exactly. Day to day, okay. So we operate our farm Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, okay. from nine to noon, and we're always looking for volunteers. Okay. You can pretty much be able to do anything. Most of our volunteers are there kind of to assist the people who have mobility challenges, help them walk a little bit, mm -hmm. or help them you know, with their hands. But most of the time, we want our volunteers just to hold conversations with uh, the people with disabilities. It's not uh, like, if you want to get in there, you want to weed, and you want to... You're, you're not going to stop you them. Right? <laughs> but that's really not what we need yeah. our volunteers for. Right. We need them to make the people feel included, welcomed, that type of thing. And I'm, gonna, I'm throwing this out there, and I've thrown it out there before because I, uh, I'm 1,000% behind it. The antidote... For depression, and you know we, that word is thrown around so much, is to help somebody mm. that you can pick up. Now, in other words, it takes the focus off of you right. and what you perceive as your unbelievable problems and issues, or whatever they are, mm -hmm. versus now it's not about you; it's about that other person, right? That you right. can help. So, so if you're thinking about um, whether you have depression or not, it doesn't matter. But I'm just using that as a point because that's a huge. You offer a huge outlet for so many people that we don't uh, consider disabled, right? Because we don't see the back end of it. But the people that have trouble, you know, just functioning, right? Mm -hmm. Because of depression or whatever that is. Once you take that focus off of you, right? Now it becomes about somebody else. And all of a sudden you start healing, right? Yeah. So even if you're not going to do it initially for uh, somebody else right. and you are doing it for you, you're still doing it. Yep. And then all of a sudden, that why right. just starts to snowball. Would you Would you agree? Absolutely. Okay. And the volunteers that come out, they always say, I'm getting so much more from this win -win. than I'm putting into it. Right? Yes. Because yes. it's, it's just such an amazing atmosphere that we have out there. And it goes back to, you know, really what is, how do you define happiness? And it's really fulfillment. Yes. If you're, that's why some of the most successful financial people can be so unhappy. Because they're still not fulfilled, right? right? You've got that Lamborghini, you've got that car, you got that, and then you get there, and then you're like, what else? Right. Because you're truly not fulfilled. So if you're not feeling fulfilled, if you want to give back, if you want to get yourself out of that funk, or if you're doing amazing and you still want to give back, right? We're not turning anybody away. No, we everyone, everyone, everyone's, everyone's welcome. welcome. <laughs> everyone's welcome. So is there anything before we jump off that I didn't touch on that you want to share? Um, I just really want to. Um, bring home the idea of inclusion and looking out into our community. Inclusion. Talk about that. What? Inclusion is just um, including everybody into oh, our society. Okay. Okay. Um, I personally really believe that I don't need a special needs class for my daughter, a special needs um, you know, swim team or, or mm -hmm. football team. What I need is for that the typical community to include my child and children like her into in the what other game, in, the, in all the games, in right? In all the games, because that's such a great point. Because when we separate them, that. we tell them that this is your place over here, and this is our place over here. So you still don't belong. You still don't belong. We like you. We love you. We're gonna create this great little program over for you, but you're still not welcome. You're still in this little plastic bubble, yep. right? So that's I knew. I, you know, obviously, this is now your world. Yes. So I wouldn't, and so many people wouldn't even think about that. Right, because you think you're doing the right thing, right? But ultimately, you're actually doing the wrong thing, uh, inadvertently. You know, obviously yeah. not not on purpose. You don't know. Yeah. You don't know until you don't. Until and you I would have know. never thought of it like that, right? I would think that well, we're giving them an opportunity, right? They're going to do what everyone else is doing, but they're really not. Right. They're really not. They're not doing what everyone else is doing, or at least not with them. Right. Love that point. That's a great way to to end this and. Because you've been able to conquer so many fear barriers, it, what, is there any golden nugget you can share with somebody that's 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 hitting that that wall that feels afraid and doesn't have the wherewithal right now to jump off that cliff and build the plane on the way down? Uh, I would just there's only one way to do it, and that's just to do it. Right. You can even if you're afraid, it's okay to be afraid, and it's okay to fail. I failed lots of times, yes. but that doesn't mean that you don't just get up. And, and keep going and don't allow yourself to get stuck in your failure. I think that that's one big thing um, 
that people really need to grasp hold of. Allow yourself the time. Maybe it's not three days or a week. There is a morning. Long, there is a morning. There is a morning a place when you fail yeah. or something bad happens to you, but you cannot let yourself get stuck there. You have to move forward. And, and you have to learn from it. And, and you really encompass what this quote is, and I love it. You know, I'm either going to win or I'm going to learn. Yes. Right? I'm going to win or I'm going to learn. And if you're not willing to learn, then you're going to keep falling. You're going to keep failing, right? And the only, I believe the only time you fail is you keep doing the same thing over and over and expect different results. Right. Right? That's insanity. Yep. That's what we consider insanity. So um, where can we reach you? Where can they find you? Yes. Uh, social media, website, share Absolutely. with everyone. So if you want to get a hold of, if you're a special needs family, you're looking for some support, um, just go ahead and Google Go Bananas. You'll find us on Facebook. Uh, Cultivating Inclusion is the name of the farm. You can go to cultivatinginclusion.org. Okay. We also have a Facebook page. Just search Cultivating Inclusion. Okay, and as everyone knows, once we jump off, Julia will have access to this show. She's going to be able to share it, but more importantly, or just as important, I should say, um, you're going to be able to answer any questions you know, when you get back on your Facebook. Mm -hmm. And once we upload this to our YouTube channel, I will let you know. And then you can also repurpose it, reshare it. And what I will ask everyone is if you're getting, if you got any value from this or you know that somebody can get value from this, share it. Let's get the word out. Let's really do our part and, and, uh, and help them because it's an amazing, amazing, I didn't hear, I wasn't, that's what I love about this show, right? I don't know what I'm going to get, right. right? But it always blows me away. It's absolutely amazing. Um, and Monster Motivator TV, we are looking, searching to highlight local businesses, nonprofits, people that are making a difference in this Southern California area and eventually nationwide. So if you know somebody, if you're that person, if you're that company, please reach out. Monster Motivator TV, go right online, book your day, book your time. We will clear that day and we will come to you. And if we come to you and we don't have Wi-Fi, we'll come back to the, <laughs> we'll come back to the, uh, we'll come back here, right? We'll come back home. So guys, Thanks so much. Keep making it happen. Don't let anything stop you. Figure out your why. Keep breaking through those fear barriers. And we're going to see you on the next episode of Monster Motivator TV. Ah, that a girl.